Hey guys, how's it going? Markel here, back with another video. My apologies for the lighting and the background noise. Uh, I did this video on the road, but I should be back home by the time this video comes out. But I wanna answer some of the most recent questions that were left behind. And uh, any other questions you guys have, please leave it in the comment section. I do not have an email. I do not have any other way for you to contact me other than in the comment section, okay? All right, so let's get started. So the first question that I got was somebody asking about the new rules that I had mentioned and I left the link for, for uh, the Colombian visa, the Retista retirement visa. The new rules kick in October 21st, 2022, okay? So if you were planning on trying to get the Retista visa, the migrant visa, before that date, you need to do it now because the first thing they gotta do is make an appointment at the embassy and that usually takes a while. So you might be able to get it in before September. I'm sorry, before October. I highly doubt it. You might get lucky and there's a slot that's open that you can fill before October 21st. But if it doesn't get done before October 21st, you, go to, you gotta go by the new rules, okay? All right, so let's get to another question here, which is, uh, it says, I'm on SSDI. I just want to work part-time and keep under the SGA, but I'm afraid it will send out a red flag, uh, though you're supposed to allow to work part-time. I'm 58, need the money, but can't afford to lose the benefits after all I went through to get them. Can't get a straight answer from most to whether I'll lose SSDI. If I work part-time, I'm not looking to test out if I can work, just extra money. Okay, now I responded back to this by leaving him a link to a lawyer named Anthony Reeves out of Florida. This is a particular subject that he talked about specifically. And what he was basically saying in that video is, when you play the money game, you normally lose. And that is because even though you wanna work part-time, and this is for these people who are out there working just enough to stay under it, Social Security notice it. And he's done enough cases to where he's talked about this, where you're doing just enough to stay under the trial work period. Well, they're gonna go, well, if you can work consistently three, four months part-time, why can't you work full-time? What he was getting at, when you play the money game, you normally lose. So for any of you all out there that's still like testing the system, they just haven't gotten to you yet. Like I told you all before, it may seem like you're getting away with it for 10 years, 12 years, until that one time comes and then they come to you with all of this consistent work that you've been doing, but you stop just before you get to that threshold. Social Security, just like the VA, is not dumb. They're not stupid. They know what you're doing, okay? And as he said in that video, and I'll put the link to his video somewhere on my page, probably on the community page. Go to it and listen to what he's telling you. You play the money game, you're gonna lose, all right? So I'm gonna just leave it at that. All right, so the next one I got says, I have a question for you. Uh, your next Q&A, if you can share with me your advice, Markel. Two weeks ago, the VA changed my rating to 100% P&T, no future exam schedule. I have two claims in the system uh, that have been pending for about two years. Some veterans say if you're 100 with no future exams, you should mess with your rating. Do you think I should withdraw my two claims that are still pending or should I keep them, uh, keep the claims pending and attend the CMP exam if one gets scheduled? Okay, so I've talked about this a couple different times in a couple different videos and I look at it like this. I can't tell you what to do. I'm just gonna give you some information, all right? That that I'll, I'll just say, I'll do, this is what I would do, all right? If they're giving me 100% PNT and the two extra claims that I have are one, not gonna get me anything extra, not gonna cover me in case I die, whatever these two are, if they have nothing to do with, you know, causing me death, like say for example, the two claims, one is for a thumb and the other one's for a risk. Well, if I never plan on leaving the States, if I'm 100 PNT, these things are covered. Those two things will not lead me to death, okay? They're not gonna cause me to die and 
my family wouldn't get DIC because I didn't claim this finger or this wrist. You understand what I'm saying? Neither one of these two, unless I lost it, unless this is like frozen, would get me into the SMC category. You understand what I'm saying? If there's no monetary value, or if it's something that's not life-threatening, or if it is life-threatening, then I would keep them if it's life-threatening. If it's going to put me in the SMC category, I would keep them. But if it's something that's, you know, you got a sprained ankle, or you got finger problems, or something very minor that's not going to put you in the SMC category and not life-threatening, you know, as long as you don't plan on leaving the States where you would need it for um, going overseas because you would need that service connection. Yeah, I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't mess with it at all. OK, hopefully that helps you out. And then I think I had one more question here. So it says so I could at least work and make twelve thousand a year and OK without informing VA. I'm 90% PNT individual unemployability. Okay, you guys on, on IU, I just don't get y'all, man. I don't. I've said this many times. I did that video trying to explain to you guys how the system works. And the one thing I said in that video, and I made sure I made it clear, is consistency. Don't think the VA nor Social Security, and I sent them the same video that I sent that guy about SSDI from Anthony Reeves. Don't think the VA or Social Security never noticed that you all consistently work because they do, okay? It's one of those things, man, where, and, and I talked to Love and Freedom about this. I know no one who is truly disabled trying to work. I don't know anybody, not, not a soul. No, I personally know no one who is truly disabled and trying to work. Now, that's not to say that people who are disabled shouldn't try to work or shouldn't do something. But I personally don't know anyone because the people that I know who have these disabilities have a hard enough time getting up in the morning, going to bed at night, moving after they've been sitting for a long period of time, right? And to even think about going to work, that is the farthest thing from these people's mind. But you guys on TDIU, man, you guys are an enigma to me because you all don't seem to understand the fact that you all told the government you can't work, but then you want to turn around and work to supplement the income you're not getting from IU. Well, make up your mind. You either can't work or you can. And I've said this many times before. Disability was never designed to make you rich. Disability is designed to keep your head above water. That's it. That you never, I don't give a damn if they give you 30% extra on what you're getting. You're never going to be rich. You're never going to be a step above anybody else. Your head is just going to be above water. That's it. That is it. I have no idea why people who want to get on IU and then turn around and say, okay, well, I think I want to work. Then you ain't disabled. In my opinion, you really ain't disabled. You're really not. You're really not. You're getting a benefit for free, basically, and then you want to turn around and work. And then a lot of you guys want to get upset with people who are scheduler and can work. Well, when you scheduler, you do whatever the hell you want because your disability is so severe, according to the VA's uh, laws that they have, that you can go out and still work. But you guys on TDIU, you said you couldn't work. You went to the government. The people on scheduler, they never signed anything that says that. You all did. So again, man, if you can work, get off TDIU and go back to work. There ain't nobody going to watch you. There ain't nobody going to tell you you limited on what you can make. You go out and make as much money as you want. And it's not like you're losing $3,000. you 90%, which means what? You're getting at least $1,900 a month on top of you getting a job, even if you got a job only making $20 an hour, you're still doing better than you would be just trying to do this with IU and work $12,000 a year. Come on, man. Come on, y'all. And again, I've said this repeatedly. Compensated work therapy. If you're bored at home, you're trying to do something, go to the VA, get you a job, tax-free, whatever federal minimum wages are, whatever your doctor allows you to do, and it's therapy. 
Social Security is not going to touch you. VA is not going to touch you. They know what you're doing. Everybody knows what you're doing. Everybody knows you're making money tax-free through therapy. That's it. Going out there trying to get you a job and your Social Security number pops and you don't think they notice, they notice. The people who have been getting away with it for five to seven years, they just haven't got to them yet. That's all. That's all. They, they low people on the totem pole. They just haven't got to them. But when they do get to them, what do you think going to happen? The same thing I just discussed earlier. If you can work, go to work. Stop trying to get something for free if you can work. Because trust me, if I could go back to what I was doing, there ain't no way I'd be still doing trying to live on this. No way. Not when I know what's out there for me. And it keeps going up every year. But you guys want to just hold on to it like, oh, man, I can't let this money go. And you already 90%? Dude, you better off working a job. That's real talk. Much better off working a job than you are trying to hold on to a disability and you struggling. Help Y'all help me in the comment section how that makes sense. Y'all help me because... If I could work, trust me, this little, because I, I barely get to 100. If I can make two, three, four hundred thousand a year, you think I'd rather be on disability? Fuck no. I'm just going to speak frank. Fuck no. All you're doing is stifling your own growth. You're stifling your own income by doing this. That's all you're doing. What? You get to lay around, you get $3,200, $3,300 a month, and what? Now you. What is it? Six of the month? You barely got $100 in your bank account? You going, man, I, I need to find something else to do. You shouldn't have never got on TDIU to begin with. Go out there and get your butt a job. All the other ways that you can substitute that money. You can go to school, vote rehab, and make up the difference and still have you a job. And guess what? Nobody's going to question you. Nobody's going to say anything to you. But you guys rather... Let me let me get this and hold it like it's gonna be gone when you get when you by the time you get ready to retire, like it's gonna be gone. Y'all keep messing around with TDIU. Okay. I've already started putting out links showing you guys where these people are committing fraud and the VA catching them. Don't think that won't happen to you guys on TDIU. Because remember, unlike people like myself on scheduler, we never signed something that says we need TDIU. You guys did. Keep playing around with the little bit of money you're getting and see what happens, all right? But all right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I appreciate everybody watching as always. And until the next time, guys, I'm out. Peace.